Yo, welcome back guys. Uh, today's video is obviously in the unit. We're going to do an EICR video. I'm not going to be on the tools or doing stuff. We're going to be showing pictures that I've asked to be sent in by you guys from Instagram. Some stuff that I found and sort of the key reasons why this law has come into effect to obviously to help protect tenants and obviously landlords alike for all this sort of stuff that's been left like this for years and we're just coming across it now because obviously we've got to go in and do this stuff. I know we're all bored of the ICRs. I'm sick to death of them. They need to be done. We're just going through the list as quickly as possible. Before I start, I'm doing a giveaway on my old iPad. This is my new iPad. I needed one that had um, 4G. This one's just a Wi-Fi one. It's an iPad Pro, 12.9 inch, that I've had for about two years now. I remember I, I put a picture on Instagram the day I had it, and this was solely to do my certificates on at work. I wanted a big screen. I didn't want a laptop or a tough pad or whatever they're called. I wanted a screen that links up with my phone, links up with my Mac at home. So it's a, I think it's a 32 gig one. It's immaculate condition, there's no drops. It's got screen protector on it still from when I brought it. It comes with a little case that I put it on. And uh, yeah, it's a great iPad. Great for doing EICRs on, great for doing uh, test sheets, all that sort of stuff. And I'm gonna give it away for free. And I'm gonna give it away on YouTube, not Instagram. Uh, what I'm gonna do is worldwide because obviously we can set the different languages on this separately. It's an Apple product, we can do it. It's reset back to manufacturer settings. Um, what I'm gonna do, comment on this uh, video, iPad Pro. Just say iPad Pro, or then tell me the reason why you want it maybe. Um, and I'm gonna leave it and I'll, I'll draw it when I hit 50K, because 50K isn't that far away for me. Um, it's a good celebration. I wanna celebrate and say thank you back. So iPad Pro up for grabs and uh, best of luck. Right, I've just shifted over a bit so we can do sort of split screen with the pictures that I've got on my iPad. So, recently, we've obviously done a lot. We've all done a lot, we're all sick of them. But I thought it'd be quite interesting slash funny to show some of the stuff off we've found. Excuse the noises all in the background. Right, I've shifted over a little bit so you can uh, split screen the pictures for you. So this is one that we found. This wasn't actually on an EICR, I don't think. This is when we're doing work at someone's house, but I just thought it was quite funny to watch, uh, to show you. So here we've got old uh, a ring main that's been split under from rubber cables under the floor that actually went into a metal galve uh, back box and then taped on top, and it was just with the twist connectors back in the day. And then on top of it, they just taped up a, it was a BB pellet, what size was it? Oh, it doesn't say. A BB pellet lid just taped to the top. But this is one of the things that you wouldn't find if you were doing an ICR. I mean, the test screens might be a bit dodgy with the rubber, the VIR cable, but yeah. Anyway, on to the next one. So this is one that we found doing a bathroom. So the bathroom pull cord, they said uh, it always smelled a bit funny when they turned it on and we found what was, I think they were wasps. I think they had a wasp nest up in the loft and obviously the hole that was in the ceiling allowed the cables to drop through was the hole in the ceiling where the cables dropped through was big enough for the wasps to get into the heat source and then they couldn't escape and I tell you what there was thousands of them up there. Next one is we went to a property and uh, the customer had previously had an electrician in five six weeks before me uh, someone fairly local uh, to change light fittings over to metal ones that they would bought the electrician said, yeah, no problem at all, charged them X amount, whatever, and went. Uh, then I got a phone call because the bulbs, the guy wouldn't answer the phone and the bulb kept flickering or something. So I went around, dropped it down. Uh, obviously this is a class one metal fitting. There was four of them throughout the house and the entire house was wired in single rubber cables. Um, no earth, CPC, on a class one fitting. Once again, what the heck, you know, we, I see this more often than not, unfortunately, and this was fully qualified Spark that done this, and yeah. Right, so this is one that you've seen previous on a video I did when we, how I think it was how not to change a cooker, and the guy had wired two six mil cables into the back of a 13 amp oven, snipped off the cores to allow the two cables to fit in, uh, the back of the oven was then missing, and also the back of the cooker, what we call the cooker wedge, the outlet for the cooker, after the uh, cooker isolation switch was missing as well. So once it was all pushed back, it was millimeters from touching the terminals. Great find, but this is one of the things we do say on the ICRs, always pull the ovens out because you've no idea how they are connected. Right, so now we're on to the pictures that I took in the course of literally two days. Two days of doing the ICRs. Uh, this very first picture I took was uh, literally just a call out of power tripping. So turned up and uh, the fuse board lid was missing to start with, which was just like, I said, where is it? He said, it was not had on for years. 
and uh, the DNO had been out over the top of the RCD. I'm guessing it was a TT system from what I can remember because there's an RC 100 milliamp RCD for a main switch. And the DNO recently have just started like screwing plastic covers to over the top of the cables for entry points and whatnot. I presume it's some way to get across single insulated cables instead of having to change them. Obviously, there's a, there's a barrier there then, but let me know in the comments below. I don't quite know. So this was the next job afterwards. The fuse board lid wouldn't close. Uh, the cables, the way it had been dressed previously on top of the MCBs, uh, were there was so much slack in there. People had tried to force it back and physically couldn't get the lid on. So the customer told me, an elderly couple told me just to keep it on. They ended up putting loads of gaffer tape and or duct tape, whatever you want to call it, onto the lid to keep it into place. So one of them, we fixed it quite easily by just stripping back a bit of the insulation and getting rid of a bit of excess cable, dressing it in nicely, lid went on, no problem at all. Do you know what I mean? Uh, then this was either that day or next day, EICR, and it was one of these things where we shouldn't really have found it, but we did. So underneath the sink, obviously there's a so socket for your washing machine to go in. So it wasn't under the sink, it was behind the washing machine, um, but there was no isolation switch on top, which obviously we know if there's an inaccessible socket, there needs to be some form of isolation. That's why a lot of the times we put the sockets physically in under the sink unit, so you can just drill a hole under it, plug it in, you can isolate it freely and unplug it. Sometimes obviously we put sockets behind the appliance and then do an isolation switch up top. Sometimes it's very difficult because the back of washing machines or dishwashers or whatnot are flat backed, so you actually can't get the socket all the way in. So we pulled it out and someone had put their own um, plug top on this washing machine at some point. It was an old one that didn't match the cable, so I presume it got damaged somewhere or someone had tried to hardwire it in in the past. And there was uh, loads of single insulation cable hanging out. And I just said to Adam, while he was testing, I'm just going to change this over. I'm just going to re-terminate it so it's a bit safer. It only took like three minutes, you know. As sparks, we should be able to do sockets quite, sorry, plug tops quite quickly. And from unscrewing it, I then found a three amp fuse in it that then had a uh, one mil, one five, multi-strand um, wrapped around the fuse carrier with the fuse still in, so hence this. So it was one of those things that I wouldn't have found unless by chance I'd pulled it out and decided to change that over. Obviously that's what pack testing's for. Um, and then here's a little video in the same property that we did the ICR at. We started doing our uh, wonder lead checks for the bonding resistance and yeah, see next to me, it wasn't bolted correctly. It was so loose and ended up flapping around in the wind. So we just had to recorrect that, that was all. Same property. Extension lead on the kitchen side had a um, European, is it? European socket plugged into the extension lead. Just, I just didn't like the look of it. Um, then going on to the next day, this was a EICR we, uh, we took out in a property. The garage board was very high up and for some reason, for some reason, I've not actually got a full picture of the actual main board it was a half RCD board, 16th edition I think it was, no RCD coverage on the first half, second half RCD coverage, 30 milliamp, all that sort of stuff which you all know. There was no spare ways there and there was four ring mains that they jammed into two breakers. So we, I just said to the guy, we don't like this at all. From further investigation when we started testing everything, one of them wasn't even a ring. So there was two radials jammed in a 32 amp with a ring. So. Yeah, what would you code that? The next one is a video that I put on Instagram. We did a visual inspection of the meat cupboard outside to see the main earth, uh, the main tails, the meter, the condition of the intake itself. And you can see clearly the water had ingressed into the outside meter box, which had then rotted away the wood behind, which then left the meter and the main fuse carrier flapping around. It was a bit rough in the clip. And uh, it was a thing that we fussy failed it for. House was fine. Everything else, absolutely fine. It's not a fail, it's an unsatisfactory, I know. But this is one of the things where you need to make sure you check in everything because that coming loose at some point. So we obviously notified the DNA, they've gone out and changed the wood, it's nothing to do with us. But until that's then done, we can't pass it off. So now we're getting onto the pictures that the guys have sent me from Instagram. Uh, I've got it all written down here. So this one's from James Day. James sent in a couple of pictures for me. First one we found here is in a three phase board. <laughs> Someone had used a connector block uh, and bolted it straight onto the buzz bar. So there was no uh, circuit protection on there at all. I've never seen this. Highly dangerous, obviously. And obviously you can see on top of the board as well, there's not a grommet 
into one of the holes and then the other one, the fire grommet, is actually on at the angle doing nothing as it is. But yeah, what would you go with that? Very badly in my eyes. The next one is a picture of an outside light, obviously with just a bit of twin coming down on the outside, which isn't rated for outside, but it's one of them. And then we go to the picture on the inside and it's full of ideals, which we'd like to see, but in this situation, an absolute mess. They would just get too hot with the bulb that you put in. I'm trying to figure out what's going to what, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. Is that water? I'm trying to figure out, is that water below? Is that the glass? Another one in by James. This is obviously a fuse board cupboard. This one's directly opposite a boiler. Armoured cable coming across. Henley blocks. I've never seen anyone screw a earth block to the side of a fuse board, which, in theory, not a bad shout as long as it's bolted and there's no loose, like, pointy cables on the end. Pointy cables, pointy screws on the inside of the board. Uh, there's a tail gland on there. It's just an absolute mess, isn't it? Nothing supported correctly. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's any trunking. Or is that the back of a fuse? That is. So on the right-hand side, that's the back of a fuse board. Very similar to the video that I did where you can actually put your fingers in the fuse board for next door in a, in a flat. Horrendous, to be honest. And no one's actually getting to that. Uh, another picture that James sent in is there's tail gland inside an outside meter cupboard with no lid on. A Henley block floating around. Armoured cable that hasn't been glanded correctly. Straight into a Henley block off the main tails. And then the earthy armoured as well, they've put an earth tag around it, which I've seen quite a few times on, on Facebook and whatnot. There's no organisation to cable entry. And for good measure, is that a bag of grout? A bag of grout in there as well, just to, to support the cable some more. So yeah, good job. And then I have seen this quite a few times with the sockets. So there'd be a single patch in the wall and uh, they want to convert it to a double, so they've knocked out the old screw holes on the back of the manual box and fed individually the cables through into the socket. We've had this quite a few times, and uh, yeah, it's just poor, in it? Really poor. There's no slack on the cable. Yeah, so now on to the next one. This is from Spark Electrical Services. Uh, obviously, this is the, I would look like it, an old rewire, but yes, a wooden back fuse board. This is the only picture I've got of it. Um, your, your main tail is 25 mil by looks of it going in, and then someone's tapped off of that. But to get the cables all fitted in, they have snipped off most of the cores in the new colours, as you can see, especially on the neutral. We could probably see three strands going in, which unfortunately I see a fair bit too often. Uh, second one, uh, main uh, switch, I think by the looks of it, main switch has started to burn out from the inside, so huge thermal effects. At some point that's just going to melt away and uh, cause a fire, potentially, or, you know, even, I say even worse, if it's worse than fire, but come loose, arc across, you know, several things that could do. So, yeah, nice one for the photo on that one. Uh, next one, uh, Essex Electrician, thank you very much, he sent two photos in. And he sent me a picture of a fuse board that obviously is started to melt with, through thermal uh, damage. And he's written on the, the message that this had passed an EICR two weeks prior. So obviously the front of the board started to melt through. We've got a bit of uh, red cable started to burn its way through. And then the picture on the inside, the cables going down into the RCD have well and truly scorched themselves, melted, start to deform all the RCD itself. So it's a massive no-no. Next photo we've got in is from Lewis Pancut. Lewis sent this one in on a, he did an inspection and then we've got what was an existing porcelain wall light, which I would probably presume we've got, uh, he said live cables, live neutral earth, just talking the connector block hanging out the wall, so that's not the best job in the world, is it? Right, to see the top of the board, there is no grommets, there's no sealant, there's no um, stuffing glands, nothing to stop the cable uh, rubbing uh, and damaging itself on the side of the metal CU. And on top of it, you can probably put your finger down in there and touch something you shouldn't do. So, nice one, thanks for the picture. Next one across is from Isaac, uh, Isaac Phillips. He said, and I couldn't quite tell to start what was going on with the yellow. I didn't know if it was mould or... I don't know, couldn't tell what it was. But zooming in closer, you can see that was old yellow fabric cable. So from the fabric cable, he says, it's a 100-year-old cable that still runs an extractor fan that still works. If you just nip across the next photo as well, you can see, you know, what is actually there and zooming in. So, yeah, I don't think that quite pass. Uh, next one, we've got Cable Smith Electric. So we see this all the time, and Adam and I do this all... Adam and I do this all the time. 
do an ICR, pull the sharp pull cord down because most of the time the cables aren't in the connections properly, they're not tight enough, you get a lot of thermal damage on the uh, pull cords itself. On this one, it's been mashed up, it's obviously pulled out as the extractor, as the pull cord's been pulled down. The cables have been twisted, jammed in, it's just not very good and I can't quite see where the earth or CPC is connected into that at all. And then the next one, which I haven't got a picture on here, which you see on the screen, is a fuse board he went to that has been recently done that has no sleeving on the earth and also no main earth into the board either. Which is a bit of a no-no. Bit of a no-no. Uh, I've got hundreds more of these. Let me know if you want to do some more or if you've got some pictures, whip them across to me on Instagram. I'll put all my Instagram links below. Go check it out. I like to say for the iPad, leave a comment in the section. I will put this on Instagram so people from Instagram can jump across, but this is a YouTube giveaway. So in the comments below, comment iPad Pro and a few reasons why you think you should win it, but it's gonna be a automated draw that I will put on as well. So I'm not gonna pick the best comment. It will be completely random. It could be worldwide, anywhere. So uh, yeah, let me know below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.